All right, uh, I'm showing you uh, the uh, reaction pass. Uh, this is a rhodium-4 cluster taking one hydrogen uh, from this ethylene molecule. And we can see some other information as well. Uh, there are 21 frames uh, from frame 1 to frame 21. We can just uh, stop the movie and move it to uh, number 1. So this is number 1. And if you look at number one, you can see uh, this uh, hydrogen rodent bond is really long. It's not really a bond. Again, Gauss you just somehow assign a bond order and it keeps that bond order unchanged during the movie. So I would say it's a feature. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna fast forward to 21. Uh, you're gonna see a product. So that's the product. It's not fully optimized, but uh, I'd say uh, we can start from this structure and do a optimization calculation and get the product. Again, if you want to optimize the so-called reactant complex, this is frame one, and uh, you can see the bond distance between this hydrogen and this carbon is actually 1.186 fairly close to the typical carbon hydrogen bond distance, which is 1.1. So supposedly, uh, Gauss U should draw a line between atoms one and two, but not a line between this hydrogen and the rhodium. But again, uh, Gauss U does not change the bond order during a move. So I want to show you the results as well. Over here, there's a summary. In the summary, you actually get to see the method, which is B3OFP. And I'm showing you the check file, and it's a triplet. Don't worry about this number, so I'm showing you a movie of 21 frames. Each frame uh, corresponds to a different structure, and of course, different energy. <clears throat> and I want to show you the energies. Side by side, and if you look at this number, frame one, we're looking at this data point. That's if you look at the molecular structure. That's very close to the optimized structure of the reactant complex. Again. This bond is roughly 1.18, very close to what it should be. So this is 1.1. This is, if you look at the bottom, also 1.1, so very close. Again, this, this bond distance is very long, it's 1.69, and the rhodium carbon bond distance here is fairly long, which is 2.2. .2. So again, you are actually looking at a structure very close to the optimized reactant complex, all right? Between this ethane molecule and this is the rhodium-4 molecule. If you're not sure about uh, the type of the atoms, uh, you can just click symbols. And uh, uh, this is black font. So, you, but now you can see rhodium here, hydrogen here. And if you want to see the order of the atoms, click label. And now you can see uh, what's the first atom in the input file. Well, it's got to be one of this four, I think one here, atom one, atom two, atom three, four, and then five, six, well, five, some are six, and then, and so on. Now, I will show you again, the so-called potential energy surface. It says total energy here in hardship, but uh, uh, to be more accurate, it's the so-called potential energy surface. Remember, the total energy must be conserved. <laughs> We're not calculating any heat flow between the system and its surroundings or any work done by the system or to the system. If you plot this graph and says total energy, 
I expect to see a constant total energy. So really, it's actually the kinetic, uh, the potential energy, right? And what about kinetic energy? So if you are looking at this one compared to this one, this structure has more kinetic energy, mostly in the form of vibrational energy. So right here, it vibrates fast over here, slow. And then I'm gonna actually uh, move this circle, this red circle here, up a little by clicking the up arrow. It's number two, frame number two, you see energy, you see the red circle going up? Number eight, now it's right here. <clears throat> number 11, there's a name for number 11. The transition state. So uh, for your computational project, you will have to optimize the transition state and do vibrational frequency calculation to ensure that this transition state has one and only one imaginary vibrational frequency. Uh, that imaginary frequency is usually in the order of several hundred <coughs> centimeter to the power of negative one, roughly. For this particular project, I'd say between 500i to uh, 1200i. i is the square root of negative one. Okay, but unfortunately, uh, in Gauss, you, you're not gonna see this i, you're gonna say negative 500 to negative 1000. It's just negative uh, 1200. It's just for convenience. This is for convenience. For programmers, they just don't want to put i there. Right? And then we keep going, 12, 13, all the way to uh, the last frame, frame 21. Uh, again, this is very close to the optimized product structure, but it is not fully optimized because, I mean, you can imagine it should go down a bit more and then level off. Somewhere here, I guess get your product. How do you go from here to here? Let's do uh, optimize, uh, optimization calculation for this data point. You can save this file and do the calculation. Yeah, similarly, you go to frame one, you save this file and do optimization. So I'm going to show you how to save this frame number 21. This is very close to the product. I will simply do this. Control S, let's save. And uh, I will just, uh, it's going to be a temporary file, so I'm going to just use P as the name. Uh, if you're more careful, uh, I would look at the multiplicity. It's a triplet. I'm going to say just uh, maybe P3. Okay. Again, it's just a temporary file. Uh, there's no check file here, P underscore 3 dot check. <coughs> Uh, check file can take check files contains molecular algorithms. Of course, we don't have this, but it's fine. We just actually need that structure. We just need the coordinates, the positions of the atoms. So we continue. All right, and uh, you can see this p underscore three on the screen already. All right, and I'm going to close this. All right, I need to save. The reactant. So that's the reactant. And how do I do this? Again, Control S. Well, save. And I'm going to say R3. Again, it's a temporary file. I just need to grab the coordinates in this R3 and P3 GJF files. So I'm going to click save. And again, we don't have the check file that contains molecular algorithms. So over here, that's your R3. All right. And then, let's look at those two files. They are here. Uh, you don't need, actually, anything else other than the coordinates. So if you want to, you can delete this. You can delete this, okay, if you want to. Again, all you need is the charge, zero, multiplicity, multiplicity, three, it's a triplet, electronic state, in the position of the four rhodium atoms, in the position of the two carbon atoms, and six hydrogen atoms. 
and you don't need these numbers either. Uh, what does this mean anyway? Rhodium 1, atom 1, and atom 2. Gauss field decided mm -hmm. to draw a single bond between these two atoms. Between atom 1 and atom 3, Gauss field decided to draw a single bond here. Between atom 5 and atom 7, again, Gauss field decided to draw a single bond. Between 5 and 9, Gauss field decided to draw a single bond. But those bond orders can be wrong. Sometimes entirely wrong. Because Gauss field is not a chemist, it's just a program. Alright, and uh, we can also actually visualize this again, just open the Gauss view. It's not in the list, so... Uh, no. That's a mistake. <coughs> Uh, by the way, you can find Gauss view here uh, under C, C drive, G09W folder, and you see Gauss view here. And just to show you that Gauss view arbitrarily assigned bound orders, I will just uh, try to make it better. at the reactant complex. We're looking at the ethane molecule and this rhodium-4 atomic cluster. This rhodium is about to insert into this carbon hydrogen bond. Alright, why do I need this? Again, I just need the coordinates. From 0, 3, that's the charge and the electronic multiplicity all the way to the last atom, I need this information. I'm doing control C to copy this. And then I need to look at, uh, I need to build a GJF file here. I want to reuse this uh, multiplicity 9, but I'm going to change the file name to 3. And I again copy this coordinates from the IRC file, again the name, file name is R underscore 3 because it's a temporary file. Control C to copy this. And Control V. To get the coordinates in here. Uh, there should be a blank line right after, after the coordinates. A blank line right before the charge and the multiplicity. And here it is. And then we're going to do optimization calculation. And look, it says 9, so I need to change it to 3. And look, it says gas equals read. This means at the beginning of the calculation, Gaussian will read the molecular orbitals from this check file. However, this check file does not exist yet. I didn't run the calculation yet, so it's a dilemma. Change it to Harris. There are four different options.